Hey guys, William Justice here. I make videos on DaVinci Resolve, exploring all the ins and outs of what you can do and all of the great things you can create with it. I've always been fascinated by the idea that what we perceive is not always real. Our brains interpret everything that we see, and it's astonishing how easy it is our brains can be tricked into seeing and believing things that aren't even happening. So today I'm thrilled to be kicking off a brand new series of creating optical illusions in DaVinci Resolve and Fusion. I've been wanting to do this for a very long time, so let's get started. I'm going to show you an illusion, and then we're going to jump into Fusion and build it. What you perceive may not be happening. For instance, let's take a look at this animation. We have green dots circling around a purple dot. Seems pretty simple, but look a bit closer. Are the green dots actually circling around the purple dot? Let's add some more dots and see how it looks. What if I told you that the green dots were not moving in a circle? In this animation, the only thing rotating and circling is the purple dot. All the green dots are just moving in a straight line. Let's uh, stretch the green dot out just a little bit. Now, not only does it look like they're circling, but they're kind of looks like they're kind of rotating around. Let's go back to the four dot animation so we can see what's happening. I'm gonna put some lines behind the dots so you can see how they're moving. As you can tell, each of the four dots is just moving in a straight line, back and forth, side to side, up and down. There's no rotation at all. Okay, here's the eight dot animation with lines, and one of the dots is colored red. You can just watch that. You can just watch it and see how it's moving. Because of your brain's expectations on how the world works, it perceives the dots as circling around when it's not actually happening. It just looks that way. All right, and here's the animation with the flattened dots. As you can see, they're all doing exactly the same thing, moving back and forth. They're not rotating and they're not spinning. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to create this animation in Fusion. We're gonna use some expressions, a duplicate node. It's pretty simple, but you may learn something. And because we can, we're gonna create a color cycling effect because it looks pretty cool. Let's create a new animation. Let's take a fusion composition and drag it into the timeline, stretch it out a bit, put the playhead over the composition and click the fusion button at the bottom. To get started, add a background node, connect that up with the media out. So we're gonna get a black background. On top of the black background, we're gonna put a line and a dot or a ball and then animate that. So we're gonna use another background and set the alpha to transparent because we're gonna take this and we're gonna merge it on top of the black background. Let's make our line. We're gonna use a background node, set the color to white. With the white background selected, click the rectangle mask icon. And the rectangle is connected to the blue mask input. And let's take a look at that background. We can adjust the rectangle to change our shape. We're gonna make a thin line and we're gonna bring the height up right about like that. And we're gonna take this and merge it on top of the transparent background. And take that and merge it on top of background one. And let's take a look at media out. So this is our line. We're gonna make it a little bit shorter by adjusting the height and make it more narrow. And let's make it a little bit more narrow and bring up the quarter radius. Okay, so we're gonna put a ball on top of this line and we're gonna animate the ball to go up and down the line. That's gonna be our reference. Then we're gonna spin it around to create the animation. We're gonna take another background node. This is gonna be the ball. All right, well, this background, and we're gonna make it blue. So we're gonna have a blue dot. And with this background selected, let's hit the ellipse mask, and we're gonna bring it down. And we're gonna take this blue background with the ellipse mask and merge it right on top of the line. And there we go. So we're just gonna to need to animate this a little bit. Let's adjust the size, make it just a touch smaller. And I want the line to not be so bright. So with the merge selected for the line, it's the merge one, we're gonna take the blend down. It's kind of a little bit of transparent line so we can kind of see the, the balls a little bit better. Okay, so let's animate this. So with the blue background selected, hit the transform tool. And all we need to do on the transform is we can adjust the Y position to create our animation. So let's make the ball go. So let's set the ball position to bring it up a bit, about 0.8, that looks pretty good. And we're gonna to go to the very first frame and set a keyframe. And for this one, I did like 40 frames. You can really do whatever you want. You just gotta be consistent. So we're gonna to go to frame 40 and we're gonna take the ball and move it all the way down. And we're gonna put it at like 0.2. So that should be equally distant between the, from the center. So it's 0.8 at the top and 0.2 at the bottom. And there's our animation. Now we need this, the ball to keep moving up and down. You see it kind of stops there. So we're gonna use the spline editor. Let's click the spline displacement and the zoom to fit button and slide this in here. Highlight both the frames and click the ping pong button. That's right down here, the little U-shaped thing. And you'll see the animation is gonna continue. So the, throughout the animation, the ball is just gonna go up and down this line. Let's close the spline editor and take a look at what we have. So now we just need to take this pattern and repeat it and spin it around. We're gonna use the duplicate node to do that. 
These nodes right here are the ball on the line. So we just need to use a duplicate node and spin and create copies of these. So with the merge three selected, we're gonna add the duplicate. Hit Control, Space, and search for duplicate, and add that in there. Now you see we, we can create, uh, let's say, five copies and adjust the angle, and you'll see we're spinning them around. Now that you notice all the, all the balls are going together, so we're gonna need to adjust the timing to get this correct. But for now, we need to make, the, make sure that these lines are spaced evenly. We're gonna use an expression to do that. So let's select the duplicate and right click on the angle and choose expression. Now we know that there's 360 degrees in an angle, so we're gonna type 360. And we want it to be spread evenly, so we're gonna divide that by copies. Copies is the number of copies from up here, so as we change this field, the angle will change. Okay, that's not bad. Now the last thing we need to do is these need to be kind of lined up a little bit differently. So we're gonna take copies and divide it by two. And you see all the balls are lined up together. So now it's just a matter of adjusting the timing. So for the timing, you can see if we change our time offset, let's move that up here, the balls are gonna kind of animate at different times. And we're gonna use, use a formula to make sure we get this correct. So right now they're kind of all bouncing around, not in the sequence that we want. So let's right click on the time offset, choose expression. So this one we're gonna type 40 because it's a 40 frame animation divided by copies. And that's gonna, and that's gonna take the animation divided up equally among all of the copies. Okay, we have something that's starting to look like it's gonna work. Um, let's say if we set, uh, say nine copies, and let's make the ball a little bit smaller. Go to the ellipse. Yeah, yeah a little bit smaller so we can see them there. All right, so we got nine copies but they're not quite creating the circle shape that we want. To do this, we're gonna to need to adjust the spline again. Select the, uh, the transform and click spline, and we're gonna hit zoom to fit again. We're gonna select these, and we're just gonna flatten these out. Now, there is a mathematical formula to do this. This just kind of happens to work, because um, you, you want the, the balls to kind of ease in and out of their position, and once we do that, we actually get a circle here. So let's take a look at what we have. Okay, we're gonna put the dot in the middle of that so we can kind of have a reference to make it look like the balls are spinning around something. So we're gonna use another background node. And this one, let's set the color to uh, kind of a purple. And add an ellipse mask. Let's take it and merge it right on top of our animation. And it obviously needs to be a lot smaller, so let's take that circle and make it a lot smaller. All right, that's not bad. Let's go back to the first frame. So we're gonna use a transform node, and we're just gonna take this and move it up kind of in the middle, position it in the middle. Roughly, that looks, that looks pretty pretty centered. Now, there's a way to compute it, but uh, that's pretty close. Okay, now we just need this one to actually rotate around. So we're gonna add another transform node. And you'll see if we, as we change the angle, this is gonna spin. And we want it to spin along with the, the blue dots. So let's go to the first frame, reset the angle. We're gonna set the angle to zero. And then we're gonna go to the 40th frame. And we're gonna set it to minus 180 and you see it's spun around into that position. So it's rotating in a position that makes it look like the blue dots are spinning around it. We need this one to repeat as well because at once we get to frame 40, the animation stops and the blue dots keep on going. So what we're gonna do is gonna hit the transform two, back to the spline tool, zoom to fit, select, select uh, both of our keyframes and select set red and set and click set relative. And there we go. It's gonna follow it all throughout the animation. Okay, I think we're done with the spline editor now. So the last thing I want to do is kind of show you what it looks like when you stretch those dots out. It kind of creates a really interesting effect. So we're going to go to the ellipse for the blue dot, and we're going to set the width and just bring it up a lot. And take the height and bring that down. Let's take the white lines and make them a lot more transparent. Just barely there. Take the width and, width and bring that down just a bit. There we go. All right, so that's kind of the, the flat line look. And the last thing I did was I used a color corrector to adjust these colors, kind of give it an interesting effect. So outside of this transform, click Control Space and type in CC for color corrector, and we can adjust the hue. So we're gonna go to the first frame and set the, set, click the keyframe for the hue and then go to the 40th frame and adjust the hue. So we're gonna have a cycle through all the colors like that. And I think I lied because we do need to go back into the See, the, the uh, color's not changing, so we need to go back into the spline editor one more time, and we're gonna hit the zoom to fit, select the keyframes, and let's choose set relative. And that's gonna keep the animation going. And that's the basics of it. There's a lot more stuff you can do, but uh, it's kind of an interesting effect. I thought this one was kind of fun. I have a, there's quite a few more that I wanna do. 
uh, kind of experiment and see all the different animations we can create with using optical illusions as the basics. If you're enjoying my videos, make sure that you like, subscribe, and comment below. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks so much for watching. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, leave them below. Let me know. Um, and I will talk to you soon. More videos on the way.